Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the next thing now is we are now going to look at the order of reactions. So a reaction is zero order. Actually, we have order of the reaction. We have them like this. We have zero order. We have first order. We have third order. And we ha also have second order of the reaction. So now we are going to look at them one after the other. So a reaction is zero order in a reactant if the change in concentration of that reactant produce no effect. So if you now have a reaction and in that reaction, the change in the concentration of the reactant have no effects on the entire rate of the reaction, it means that the reaction is at zero order. For example, let's say you have A and B react to produce uh, C and D. So if increasing the concentration of either A or B have no effect to the overall order of the reaction, it means that that reaction is in zero order reaction. Meaning that the increase in the concentration of either A or B do not increase or do not increase the rate of the reaction. So it means that the reaction is in zero order. And a reaction is first order if doubling the concentration causes the rate to be doubled. So it means that if you double the concentration of A and the rate of the reaction is double, it means that the reaction is in first order. And then a reaction is in second order, is in second order if the doubling the concentration causes a quadruple increase in the reaction rate. When we said quadruple, it means that uh, four, that is if the rate of the reaction is increased by four times, so it means that the reaction is in second order. So it means that in a second order reaction, if the rate of the reaction is increased, sorry, if the concentration of the reactant or product increases the rate of the reaction by quadruple, that is four times, it means that the, 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 it means that the order of the reaction is in second order. And then the third order, in the third order reaction, if doubling the reaction or if increasing the concentration of the reacting species or the reacting particles, doubling the concentrations in that case leads to eight times increase in the rate of the reaction, it means that that reaction is in a third order of the reaction. And a third order reaction is extremely rare. It's extremely rare. When we say it's extremely rare, it means that it's used to be very, very difficult to have this kind of reaction. Okay. So now we are now going to look at the order of the action. So you see the order of the reaction, you see this number one. It means that the reaction is in zero order if you increase the concentration of this A, which is the reactant, but at the end, there is no any effect. There is no any effect in terms of the increase in the rate of the reaction. It means that the reaction is in zero order. Then the reaction is in, is, is, is in first order if increasing the rate of the reaction it also uh, double the rate of the reaction. So in that case, we have this expression. So we need to understand this integrated form. So for the zero order, we have concentration of A is equal to the initial concentration of the reactant minus Kt. And then for the first order reaction, we have the differential form. So for the differential form, we have D of E that is differential of concentration of A with time is equal to minus Kt. And the integrated form is lin 
concentration of A is equal to lean concentration of the initial substrate minus Kt. So all this integrated form, we have to know them. We need to know them. It is very, very important because we are coming to the point where we'll be using this integrated formula to calculate some expression. Then for the second order reaction, remember in the second order reaction, we said that if, by incre if you increase the concentration of the reacting species and that leads to increase in the concentration, sorry, increase in the rate of the reaction by four times, it means that the reaction is in second order and this is the integrated form. So we need to know all these formula that are very, very important because we are coming to the point where we'll be using them to do some calculations. So this one are all important and this one. Then for the second order reaction, sorry, for the third order reaction, this is the expression where we said that it's usually used to be very, very complex. So ladies and gentlemen, this is in the case where we talk about the second order of the reaction and it's very, very important. So you see for the zero order reaction, this is it, zero order, this is the expression. And uh, at the end, we'll have concentration of A with T minus KT plus the concentration of the initial substrate. So this equation has the general form for a straight line. So it has a general form of a straight line. Remember, we have a straight line graph where you have your y axis, m is your slope, and x is your x axis, and you have b as, 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 as an intercept. So now, what we need to understand here is our a of a with function of t is our y axis, while minus k is our slope, and t is our x axis while A of the in concentration of initial substrate is our intercept. So this is how it is. This is the graphical presentation. This is our Y, this is our Y axis, the concentration of A with a function of T, and this is our S axis with T, and we have minus K as our slope. Then for the first order reaction or for the first order process, this is the expression. And we also have a graphical presentation of this. I look at it, but in this case, we have lean concentration of T and we have this minus KT. So we need to understand all these things. They are very, very important as we are going to use them in doing some calculation. And of course, this is the slough, and these are some examples. So we are going to look at these examples one after the other, but for now,